especially want to congratulate someone who truly embodies the American ethos of big thinking and risk-taking. After achieving success as an internet entrepreneur, he could have spent his fortune doing anything, including yachting, lots of things. He could do lots of things. But in 2002, he began pouring tens of millions of dollars of his own money into research and development for a new rocket. He's a little different than a lot of other people. He liked rockets. He assembled a crew of some of the greatest minds and talent in American aerospace. In the years since, SpaceX has become the first private company to develop and successfully launch its own rocket into orbit, the first to launch and recover its own capsule. And of course, moments ago, SpaceX became the first private company to put humans into orbit around the Earth. Elon Musk, congratulations. Congratulations, Elon. Elon Musk is trying to invent a future not by providing the next app. Why do I hear millennials say, oh, it would be awesome if you could pass the salt? Is that how you're using the word awesome? Excuse me, when I was growing up, awesome was applied to when we walked on the moon, when we cured disease, major societal advances. That's what we applied the word awesome to. And so what Elon Musk is doing is not simply giving us the next app that will be awesome on our smartphone. No, he is thinking about society, culture, how we interact, what forces need to be in play to take civilization into the next century. And it has to do with transportation. It has to do with space exploration. Why? Because there's unlimited resources in space. Resources that on Earth we fight wars over? In space, you no need to fight a war. Just go to another asteroid and get your resources. A whole category of war has the potential of evaporating entirely with the exploitation of space resources, which includes the unlimited access to energy as well. That's where Elon Musk is. Those are the kind of people who transform not only society and the apps that are on your computer, he will transform civilization as we know it. Elon Musk is deeply respected by everyone who works in his company, by anyone who owns a Tesla. People who own Teslas love their Tesla, right? There aren't many cars that have that relationship with their owners. Anyone who knows and cares about space exploration knows and cares about Elon Musk. And there's a subset of them who say, other people don't realize it yet, but we are on the frontier of the future of civilization. I don't think he gets his full due from all sectors of society, but ultimately he will. When the sectors that he is pioneering transform the lives of those who are currently have no clue that their life is about to change. Go Elon Musk. And I don't care if he gets high. <laughs> what is the difference between what, the way you're approaching this versus the way Elon Musk is approaching this versus the way Jeff Bezos is approaching this? Um, That's a conversation that we have well, a lot, but you're, <coughs> you're now here and you can, you can tell us yourself. As an as a, as a, uh, astronaut, I'm sitting <laughs> opposite. Um, who, um, I think um, space needs a lot of, a lot of companies um, doing different things to, um, to, uh, to, to benefit the Earth back here. Um, I think um, Elon's absolutely fixated on going to Mars and uh, and that is, is almost, I think, is, is his life mission. And, um, uh, and it's, it's, it's as wonderful as, you know, Kennedy was fixated on, on the moon. The, the moon, the moon. That Elon was talking about today. But uh, he has amazing capacity and some brilliant people working for him. And I, I think it's a great outlandish goal to set for everyone right now. Right. Great. And Elon is out in front of the pack. Right. So I, I'm... I don't want to belittle anything. No, no, you're but, not. Uh, but it's harder than it seems. You're not sounding negative. Is, it, is Mars really that interesting? I mean, it doesn't seem like there's that much up there, really, once you get there. I think what Elon also recognizes is there are moments in history where things come together. We would never have put people on the moon if it hadn't been the combination of the Cold War, of a populist president, and then the president being shot. If those things hadn't all happened, I don't think the United States would have sustained the inertia and impetus to actually put Neil and Buzz on the moon in 69. And I think Elon also sees that sort of moment in time when the technology and the um, 
the economy sort of make this possible. Right. And he recognizes that his company is in a position to do that. So I think that gives him partially a sense of urgency. Tesla's now worth more than GM and Ford. Do you have comments on Elon Musk? Well, you have to give him credit. I spoke to him very recently, and he's also doing the rockets. He likes rockets, and uh, he does good at rockets, too, by the way. I never saw where the engines come down with no wings, no anything, and they're landing. I said, I've never seen that before. And I was worried about him because he's one of our great geniuses and we have to protect our genius. You know, we have to protect Thomas Edison and we have to protect all of these people that uh, came up with originally the light bulb and uh, the wheel and all of these things. And he's one of our very smart people and we want to we cherish those people. That's very important, but he's done a very good job.